until now we have seen the fourier series representation for periodic signal and the fourier transform representation for a periodic signal we said that the periodic signals can be better represented using fourier series and a tool to represent a periodic signal is the fourier transform we have derived the equation for the fourier transform by extending the fourier series and making the period till infinite that means the a periodic signal can be considered as a periodic signal with a period being infinite and that's how we have derived the fourier transform for a periodic signals now this fourier transform is quite versatile tool the fourier transform can actually be used for both not only for the a periodic signal but also for the periodic signals and that's what we are going to see in this module what we are going to prove is that this fourier transform can be used for both this periodic as well as a periodic signals so both of this periodic as well as a periodic we can use the fourier transform let's try to prove that let's start from the representation of fourier series we have seen that a periodic signal let's say xp of t uh, a periodic signal xp of t can be represented using fourier series representation as a k where k is running from minus infinite to infinite e power j k omega naught t where this omega naught is the fundamental frequency of x p of t now if i need to calculate the fourier transform let's take the fourier transform on both the sides so the fourier transform is going to be fourier transform of this periodic signal x p of t is equals to this summation as it is being linear i can take the fourier inside so fourier transform of ek e power jk omega naught t let's have a look at the expression inside this parenthesis it is ek e power jk omega naught t so what is the fourier transform of this quantity now we have already seen from the properties of fourier transform that if i have a signal in the frequency domain if i have an impulse in the frequency domain let that be omega del of omega and that is being scaled by a factor of 2 pi its inverse fourier transform is going to be 1 is the inverse fourier transform of 2 pi del omega and what if i shift this impulse by a certain amount let's say omega minus say omega dash so that is going to be 1 multiplied by e power g omega dash times t where this omega dash is nothing but the amount of shift that has been incurred in this impulse signal now the same property i can apply it here so here the k times omega naught is the omega dash and I, I can apply the same property here so what i'm going to get is that now this is using the property of fourier transform so this is the fourier transform property you can easily prove this and we have already seen the property of shift in the frequency domain so this uh, shift in the frequency domain is actually reflected as the power of exponential in the time domain and we can apply the same property here and what we are going to get is that this is equals to summation this k running from minus infinite to infinite 
AK being a constant, I can take it outside. This is going to be 2 pi times del of omega minus k times omega naught. So that is the Fourier transform of a periodic signal, let's say that is xp of t. Now that is what is called as a Fourier transform representation. It's called as a Fourier transform representation of periodic signals that is xp of t. So this is the this is what is called as a Fourier representation or Fourier transform. of periodic signals periodic signal that is x p of t so now we have a very versatile tool that is Fourier transform and we have seen that this Fourier transform can be used for both types of signals maybe it is periodic or aperiodic we know for periodic signals they we have introduced earlier the tool that was called as Fourier series and for aperiodic we have introduced the tool that is Fourier transform but now we have proved that this Fourier transform can be used for both periodic as well as for aperiodic signals and of course for obtaining the Fourier transform of a periodic signal we must know the Fourier series coefficients of that periodic signal. So let's take an example. Example now as we have seen that in order to obtain a Fourier transform we must know the Fourier series coefficients. So let's take an example let's suppose a signal under consideration x p of t is let's suppose cos omega naught t let's consider this signal now we know that the Fourier series representation that is a case so we can solve this is xp of t I can represent that using Euler equation as e power j omega naught t plus e power minus j omega naught t by 2 and can see that this omega naught and this k factor here is 1 so a k I can say that a k or we can say that for various values of k for k equals to 0 a k there is no DC factor here so that is going to be a 0 is going to be 0 and we can see that for k equals to plus or minus 1 a k or a plus minus 1 it is going to be half why because this coefficients here are half e power j omega naught t and this we can say that this is k times omega naught so k is 1 here whereas for the other factor it is half times e power minus j omega naught t where this this is k equals to 1 and this is for k equals to minus 1 
so for k equals to plus minus 1 it is the Fourier series coefficients are the coefficients of this exponential so that is half and half here now we know what are the a k's this the Fourier series coefficients of this signal under consideration that is xp of t exist at only k equals to plus minus 1 now that we are known about the Fourier series coefficients we can calculate the Fourier transform of this xp of t by simply multiplying that with 2 pi and by an impulse that is located at integer multiple of the fundamental frequency what I mean to say that is if I try to plot this Fourier series coefficients of this periodic signal it is going to look something like this so we have this as something like this we have this impulse being located at not an impulse but a factor of half say that this is half and half located at k equals to minus 1 and 1 so this is the kth axis and these are the a k's now this is what is called as the Fourier series representation so this is the Fourier series representation now if I need to go for the Fourier transform what I need to do is simply apply the equation that we have obtained here so for Fourier transform I have the EKs already I, can, I need to simply multiply that with 2 pi and with an impulse that is being located at integer multiple of omega naught so what I am going to get here is that this is going to be this a k's are going to be scaled that means a k that will half so this summation where this so I'll write it as the Fourier transform of x p of t is going to be summation where this k is running from minus infinite to infinite now I should not consider from minus infinite to infinite because the other values of k are 0 here so I will consider only from minus 1 to 1 so let's consider the generalized case from minus infinite to infinite the factor that is 2 pi times a k times del of omega minus k times omega naught and this turns out to be as we know that the a k's exist for only plus or minus half and for other values it is simply zero so this is going to be equals to now this a k we already know this a k values for k equals to plus minus 1 is half so that is going to be equals to pi times del of omega minus omega naught and pi times omega del omega plus omega naught so if I try to plot this what I'm, going, what I'm going to get is the same representation what we have got it here we am going to get the same representation so I'll simply copy that here but with a change in the scaling factor the scaling factor here is going to be you can see that the scaling factor is going to be pi so I simply multiply this with pi so that is going to be pi times if I simply rub this this is going to be an impulse whose area is going to be pi and the other impulse the second impulse is also going to have the factor of pi and this now is not going to be Fourier 
series coefficient this is going to be Fourier transform so the axis is going to be so the axis here is going to be omega naught it's going to be omega naught it's going to be minus omega naught it's going to be zero and this is the axis of omega and this is called as not the Fourier series this is called as a Fourier transform so this thing here the second plot that we have obtained is called as the Fourier transform Fourier transform now you can observe from both of these plots that the Fourier series can be converted to Fourier transform by simply scaling these Fourier series coefficients and the scaling factor is 2 pi times del of omega minus k times omega naught and that's what we have done it here and thus we can obtain the Fourier transform of periodic signals let's stop here